Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, today I'm going to paint um, a Christmas star, like this one. This is my test one that I did this morning and I'm just showing it to you here so you can get an idea what it looks like when you see the thumbnail because this is our template for the thumbnail. I use a very, <clears throat> you could say, sort of old school system so that I can test whether or not uh, the painting that I'm doing is going to look good on the screen. So I just thought I would share that with you in case anyone else is interested. Um, but as you can see, that looks okay, I think. And uh, so as I say, this is my test. Um, what I'm going to use today in the way of materials is a sheet of uh, Meaden Hot Press 100% cotton watercolour paper size 10 by 7. It's not going to, I'm not going to do it that size, I'm going to do it, um, I fit it onto there like that, because I think that's big enough. Could do it smaller too. Um, so it's just up to you, it's just it's probably uh, easier to do it a little bit larger. Um, I'm going to use my uh, Kuretake paints. And for anyone who's interested, one of the reasons why I use Kuretake for my videos is because I don't know quite why it is, but there's something about the constitution of them and they photograph very well. They're, they're very, very good for digitalization, if that's a word, digitization. Um, and I know a lot of designers and people who do um, work that's going to be manipulated using uh, Procreate or um, not Photoshop, that's it, Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever. I don't do that. Um, but anyway, that's the reason, one of the reasons. And another thing, actually, while I'm talking about the Kuretake colours, somebody the other day said, asked, um, I've seen that there's a warning on, um, on Amazon that uh, they're toxic. And so I contacted Kuretake and asked them and they came back to me and they said, no, that's actually not true. There's a mild, very, very, very slight danger of toxicity for the people who prepare the paints. But in normal use, there is no toxicity. And they're in conversation with Amazon about the notice that's been put up because they didn't put that notice up and they consider it to be wrong. So I'm going to take their word for it. Um, I think unless you were eating these paints literally by the mouthful and who would, um, there's no chance of toxicity. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I'm also going to use um, PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone gold. This is a very cheap one from the Ukraine. I don't know if you can get it anymore. Made by Rosa. I, th I think you can. I think they're selling them on online um, but it doesn't matter what one you use or you could use burnt sienna any color like that um, or any other color come to that you don't have to do what I do and m mostly I'm going to use lemon yellow uh, to start with that's this color here lemon yellow comes uh, in all sets you'll always find a lemon yellow or a cold yellow somewhere in your set of paints Okay, so uh, let's get started, shall we? I've written my notes here so that I can remember what to do. It's always a good idea to do that if you want to do something more than once, to make a note of what you're doing as you go along, if you see what I mean. Oh, I've got a little spritz bottle here, which I'm going to use in the process, and a pencil, that's useful. And as far as brushes go, any brush will do, any brush at all, as long as it's got something of a point, because you're going to want to get into the, the pointy bits there. So um, I, I, I don't know whether it's necessary for me to put a tracing of this online. I think probably not. Um, the way I would do this kind of star, I'm just going to sit down. Let's make sure there's no cat on my chair. Uh, the way I would do this star is probably, if you're going to do it properly, probably a good idea is to measure and use a ruler. So that's about six inches. So I'm just going to do a line about six inches long down the middle. And the width, it's very uneven what I've done, is about four inches. And I would say that was probably about that far down. So we put that on there. And then basically you kind of divide those two sections like that. So it's very rough. That just gives you the rough structure. And then you might say to yourself, well, I'm going to paint sort of up to here. 
because maybe when you've done this, you're going to cut it out or you're going to frame it, but you don't want to paint the whole, the whole thing. So then let's uh, just complete our star like this. I, I could put up a tracing of it if you think if you think it's necessary. If anyone wants it, let me know in the comments below and and I'll I'll put it on the website. So, oops, that one's a bit a bit long and that one's a bit short. Well no, I don't know if that one's a bit short. Anyway, you can alter them as you go along. You don't have to be precise about this. So that's roughly that's roughly star shaped, isn't it? Ooh, this is exciting. I enjoy this bit. So um, brush wise, I can use my, I could use, I tell you what I could use. I could use the cat's tongue brush. Uh, it's quite big, but it does have a point. There is a point to this brush. And um, ha ha. So let's wet my brush. I'm using indigo, so I'll just wet the paint there, you can sort of sh smush it around in there if you want, but I don't want it wet, I want it quite thick. So we'll do that. And then we'll just paint round what I've drawn. And as I said, the, the good thing about these brushes, this is one of my set, is that you can cover the ground really quickly. You could use a smaller brush if you wanted to, it would take longer and uh, you can get into the points with the pointiness of this uh, cat's tongue and you get really nice if you put the brush strokes in sort of loosely you can get a really nice texture and some variety variety of depth of tone and so on and so forth. I've just remembered one step of this painting which I didn't put on my notes, which is to reinforce the blue after you've put in the star. So I'll try and remember that and I'll put it on my notes. Oh, good news about the pig. Very, very, very good news. No, they haven't eaten him. He hasn't been put out of his misery. But I, um, I mean, that probably will be his eventual fate, unfortunately, unless, well, I don't know. We'll see, maybe not. But anyway, for the time being, you remember I told you the other day that the poor pig, and if you looked at my, um, you, uh, my Facebook, page you would have seen photos was being kept in a very muddy wet roofless horrible environment with nowhere to sleep no no straw nothing and the chickens also were suffering from from that so after we spoke to him and I said do you want some help you know can can we um put him in one of our barns or something like that he said, no, no, it's all right. I was thinking of moving him. Well, he has done a wonderful thing. He's converted what used to be an old garage into a wonderful little um, barn and there's plenty of straw now. Um, he's got light, he's got air, he's got somewhere to sleep. He's been, the chickens have been given a nest box in case they want to lay any eggs and um, a place to perch. It's perfect. So I'm really, really relieved and happy to be able to say that my intervention, and I'm going to carry on feeding him because we often have spare food to share out amongst the animals and don't see why we shouldn't. Um, yeah, our intervention prompted him to, to do that. So I'm greatly relieved. Phew, and everyone can breathe a sigh of relief. The piggy is happy now. He's completely safe and sound. Okay, so the star now I'm going to paint, oh, I should dry that. Hang on a second, because if I put yellow next to this, I'll end up with green and we don't really want that. So I'm going to just turn you off while I, while I um, dry it with the hairdryer. 
Okay, so that's dry. That didn't take a second to dry. Um, I should probably just mention that the cat's tongue brush that I was using is uh, one of our set, this set here, um, which is on second release now. We sold the first 300 in about five hours. And um, now Craft Mo have kindly agreed to make a second set, which is gonna be available uh, to be shipped out on around about the middle of December. Um, but already more than a hundred of them have been sold and paid for. So um, they're going to probably sell out too. So if you're in the least bit interested in acquiring some of my custom brushes, um, I would go ahead and buy them now because this, will, this won't happen again. This set, the second edition of, the, of these brushes is going to be the last. They won't happen again. They're going to become rare collector's items if I have anything to do with it. Um, yeah, so we have a one inch flat. We have the, three quarter, the half inch mop three-quarter cat's tongue, which when it's brand new, you can see how wonderful that point is. Look at that. It's a really nice brush, actually. They're all really nice brushes and I've found them very, very good so far. This is a number 14 round, a number nine round and a number four round. All the rounds have slightly longer hairs than usual because that's what I chose and that gives you more flexibility in your painting style, which is what we wanted. So I'm going to use the number 14 to put my lemon yellow in now and uh, we'll see how that goes. Of course you can use any brush you want, whatever you feel comfortable with, but this, this does cover the ground a little bit quicker than a smaller brush and we're not worried about going over the edges because this is going to be what you could call a, a rustic star could call it that if you wanted to. So it doesn't matter. In fact, if anything, it's a good thing um, to go over the edges a little bit. I'm not sure what that is. So let's just get the first coat in. Now, in order to achieve this kind of um, boho look, we have to put more than one layer of paint on. And um, I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to put on top of that using these ones here, still on the Kurataki front, we'll pick up some silver. It's going to be mixed with the yellow, so it doesn't really matter if it mixes in the pan, because we're going to pick all that up. These, these um, uh, metallics, the Kuretake ones that come in the set, in the big set, the 48 set, are quite good, actually. I'm surprised how intense they are. Um, so they, they are what I used yesterday to do the Christmas tree baubles. And they, they definitely are more intense when they dry. But we'll just put a layer of that on next. Tamsin's just started up the the little tractor and the lawn um, trailer. We're trying to start to clear up the uh, broken trees, the branches need cutting and getting rid of from the storm. It's been a month, nearly a month. And now I'm going to put white on top of this. So we've had yellow, we've had silver, now we're going to have white. And at this point you can uh, alter the shape of your um, star a little bit if you want, because this PH Martins white is opaque, pretty, pretty opaque. which is quite good. So we'll just do that. And then the next step, we're not finished yet. The next step is to dilute some of that white a little bit. And we'll put some, not quite enough water. 
some stars in the background. This is stars layer number one. There we are. So that's good. And can use up some of that water. Okie dokie. So that's that's that step done. And we need to dry it again. Okay, so now um, the next thing I'm going to do is to modify the shape of my star a little bit. So we'll go back to the indigo and um, using it quite thick, this is going to achieve two things. First of all, I'm going to make it darker behind because obviously it always dries a bit lighter. Secondly, I want to get a kind of rough edge when we go to the next step. And um, so it's a case of I'm partly modifying the shape because I want to modify the shape, partly to make it darker at the back here behind the star to make it stand out more. Um, what else? Well, that's about it, really. You can just adjust it however you you want to get to get that edge, which you can see in the trial one, All right? Uh, yeah, go there. I don't make them any shorter necessarily, but just come in a bit further. And they don't have to match. Don't try to make the left match with the right, whatever you do. But that wants to come down and make that one a little bit longer. There we are. And as we've said many times before, if your hand shakes, don't worry. It doesn't matter if the lines aren't straight. If anything, it's better when they aren't. Mm. I forgot to finish off what I was doing there. Just make that a bit darker. You can sort of go around and around your stars or you can go over them and put them in again. Depends how attached you are to your stars. Okay, so now I'm going to turn you off and dry it again. Okay, so the next colour to go on is going to be some of this quinacridone gold. This is a funny quinacridone actually because it's kind of um, quite opaque. Whoops, picked up a dog hair from somewhere. Uh, it's quite opaque. So it goes over the top of everything quite well. Uh, it will pick up a bit of what's underneath, but that's good. And it, you can go over your blue a little bit. That will also add character. And it doesn't matter if it's not 100% geometrically perfect, because we're not into that. We are into expressive art. So there we are. That's that's the quinacridone gold on top now. And then we'll just pick up some more white and pop that in on top again. And you'll see why we're doing all these layers in a minute. I hope. And now we're going to do the gold and the silver. So I'll clean that brush. And I need to um, smush this, <laughs> smush this, <laughs> I have to put my teeth in, smush this up a bit so it's nice and thick. And then paint gold on top.
Then once we've done the gold on top here, we're going to paint some stars in the background. Just, just pop it in, leave it kind of rough like that. And we'll go to a smaller brush for the stars and some more white. And we'll just put in some very uh, random stars. Oops. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. That's it. And then we'll make that nice and wet and do lots more spatters. Right. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to get secret uh, weapon, some, uh, what do we call them? Facial tissues, you know, for blowing your nose on. Um, and a little bottle of water. And we're just going to very lightly spritz that. Then we put the tissue on top. And basically what we're doing here is pulling a print because we're gonna rub that over lightly, lift it up, and quite a lot of paint comes off. You could probably let that dry and use it for um, collage. Let me do it again. Take another tissue. Do the same. And just repeat this until you are happy with the rusticity of your star. I'll do it again. I think I did it four times in the last one. There we are, we're getting there. And rather than wasting your tissues, you can, of course, put it down that way around and then put another one on top if you don't want to use them for collage, but you could. You could definitely let them dry and then use them in a junk journal or something like that. Okay, so we're getting there. And what we want to do now is to spatter again with some, some more white. Whoops, that's a bit a bit too thin. You could use a toothbrush to do this with two. And we might want to do some silver stars as well. My little white stars here need to be could use a pen for this if you wanted to. A white pen, gold pen as well for some of the embellishments and so on. And then I think Again, just a bit of tidying up. Around the edges. And then we'll put the hairdryer on it and let it dry. You might want to, uh, you could put some dark spatter on as well if you want to really go crazy with the texture. And of course, nothing to stop you from doing whatever you like as far as coming in, if you want to, with a brush and adding to the effect. 
So, you know, you could put some shadows in and so on to give it more three-dimensionality if you wanted to. So, and you could even, I suppose, if you want to, do one final blot. I like that to be quite dark behind, like that. Anyway, so there we are. I'm just going to dry it and come back and evaluate. So there we are. Oh, I just wanted to remind you about our mugs, which we have on our website. This is uh, one of the designs that we have, which has got uh, one of my hummingbirds on it, um, which you might be interested in. And there's about half a dozen other designs as well. They're not very expensive and they're very good. So. Uh, Pop over there and have a look and see if there's anything else you'd like. Lots of downloads as well. Um, so there we are. There's our Star of Bethlehem. I think that would make quite a nice card. You could make it smaller. You could um, make it like this and then you could print it smaller and cut it out and stick it on a card and, you know, Bob's your uncle, so to speak. Um, anyway, whatever else it is, it is fun to do. And I hope you enjoy it. And uh, here we are. That's is how it's going to look on the thumbnail so i will see you soon everybody have a lovely day and uh bye for now everyone bye bye <laughs>